Let's get comfy because we're going to talk about some video game development today. Okay, so last week you saw me working on some new concept art for my water level and this week I carried that forward and made an infinitely scrolling vertical background for it as well as an infinite automatic background object generator. <laughs> the first thing I made was the swimming mechanic and uh, I got this kind of as an idea from the Donkey Kong Country series where when you swim, you press uh, the swim button and it propels you kind of like up and forward. And then if you don't press it, you automatically float or sink down. Um, so I implemented that so every time you press space bar, you'll be propelled up. Um, and then yeah, slowly gravity with some good uh, drag on the player will bring you back down. I also used a Cinemachine camera and made it so that the Y bias is quite low and also the soft and dead zone height is small. So this makes it so the camera follows the player but keeps the player relatively close to the bottom of the screen so you can see when bad guys and things are coming from above. I also made the dead zone width to be the full width of the screen so that any lateral movement would not move the camera left or right because it's purely a vertical level so I didn't want to have to account for any um, horizontal camera movement and then have to do the background stuff with it. So yeah, just purely vertical. For the infinitely scrolling background, I needed to account for the fact that the player will go up but they'll actually go down as well. So if they're floating down, 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 the background has to kind of be able to move up and down. So what I did was I have three background sprites that are all seamless uh, and I labeled them top, middle and bottom and I made it so that if the camera Y position is at the top of the middle sprite then it'll move the bottom sprite to the top and then uh, if the camera Y position is at the bottom of the middle sprite it'll move the top one to the bottom so basically it'll keep like rotating through all these different sprites based on like if it's moving up or down and that way I don't have to generate or destroy anything I don't have to it just worked <laughs> after I did that I um, actually duplicated my whole background and flipped all the sprites horizontally and vertically so it kind of looks different and I put transparency on that one in the original so I made kind of like a double layered background and then I took the parallax script that I made in my first level and I put that on these two backgrounds and then I also made a skybox out of the same darker version of the water seamless background so I have like a three layer water parallax that's going so that when you move it looks really nice and kind of just a little bit more dimension than one simple background moving. Next up was the level generator. It's not a level generator, it really. It's just sort of like a background object generator. Let's throw some stuff in the background so that it looks like there's more going on here generator. I took the background object generator that I made in level one and kind of expanded on it. I have to make it infinite, right? So the one I made on level one just sort of generated them all at the beginning and I had a set level length. This, um, instead, I basically start by generating a bunch at the beginning, but then it keeps track of which object, they're all randomly placed objects by the way, and I have bounds um, so it knows where to place them within the bounds, but it keeps track of which object is on the top and then if the player become, uh, comes within a certain distance of that top object, then it will just generate like five more on top of that. And then also in that same check, if the player becomes uh, close to that object, it will also run a script that I have called, not a script, it will also run a function that I have called destroy old, and it will check that same distance below the player, and if anything is lower than that, it will not destroy, but deactivate those sprites. And it keeps all those objects in a object pool. I also made a floor. So there's the floor, if you fall down. And then we just keep going up, and it's just gonna endlessly generate things. Oh my gosh, I love it, yay!
next up, I did some painting for my water level character. Uh, I was tempted to give her like a mermaid tail, but I think at some point later in the game, she's probably gonna have to walk on land with the other characters. So I just did some frog legs kind of thing instead with webbed feet and hands for swimming. And I styled her head after a beluga whale, uh, <laughs> which I think actually looks really cute. And as such, I've named her Blugo. And I seem to be sticking with this naming convention of names that start with a B and end in an O. So now we have Babo, Bronto, and Blugo. I have a lot of painting footage, uh, and I personally really like to watch painting videos, especially time lapses and see progress over time. I find it very relaxing. Um, so I, I don't know what you guys like. If you want, I can include lots of painting footage in these devlogs, or if you find it boring, then I could keep it short and sweet. So let me know in the comments below if you like lots of painting or not, and I can adjust accordingly. So for this, actually, I even did concept art in my little sketchbook before I even started painting. And yeah, I think it turned out okay. And then I did my editing in Photoshop. Every single devlog is one of these things. This is how I make all my assets. I just paint them, take a photo, edit them in Photoshop, cut them out, make a spreadsheet. Uh, I've gotten pretty quick at it, to be honest. The first time I did it took forever, and now I'm, I know what kind of like saturation I need, what kind of highlights, what kind of shadows. I, I'm content with that. So. All right, this is what I got so far. I got uh, blue go in here. The idol looks pretty nice floating, but the swimming isn't really quite working. Like, kind of. It just doesn't seem to match with the swimmy trigger. You know, like, it should swim each time I press, but it's just kind of swimming. <laughs> and moving sideways doesn't work. Great. So I've adjusted the animation to work better with the trigger. It's still not ideal. But because the trigger happens so frequently, um, I could only really go between two major keyframes in the animation. So one is sort of like the crunched up and then the other is the propelling forward. And I wanted the, I wanted Blue Go to be perfectly straight um, right when you hit the trigger. So it kind of has that motion of shooting through the water. I also added this turning mechanism so that when you hold any of the left or right keys, you slowly start to turn in that direction and then when you let go of the key you automatically slowly rotate back to face straight up so you don't have to keep rotating back if that makes sense this was such a pain to make by the way quaternions 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 i have no idea how they work still but it ended up working i think it looks great yeah I, that's it <laughs>